Guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am in my kitchen. You guys have never seen my kitchen before. Well, I mean, if you follow me on Instagram and TikTok, you've seen bits of my kitchen, um, but you haven't really kind of gotten a, a whole view before. I think in the past, I've kind of tried to avoid filming YouTube videos in my kitchen. I don't know why, it's just, my kitchen is a no-frills kitchen. It's very, um, very low key. It's also a galley style kitchen and that makes it very hard to film because I, there's just not a lot of room to set up cameras and all of that. Um, right now you are attached to my windowsill with this thing that I just kind of rigged up. I don't know how this is gonna work as far as angles and everything. Like I said, it's, it's, it's a galley style. It's hard, like there's one wall in front of me where you're attached, there's one wall here. All I can do is walk through it like this. <laughs> um, so I don't know, we're, we're gonna give it a shot. I'm about to have a very extensive pepper harvest. I already have some over here. I don't know if they're in the frame or not, but um, I've already got some peppers harvested that I need to deal with. I have a lot of peppers out in the garden that I need to go and harvest and deal with. One of my most common questions that I get asked on my harvest videos, especially if it's a lot of peppers, is what do you do with all those peppers? So today I'm showing you. In the peak of the summer, at the peak of production, I'm usually in the kitchen a day or two per week, usually on the weekends, doing some type of preserving because I have to. I don't want the things I put my heart and soul into growing to go bad. What I think I can do with my peppers today, what I think I have enough peppers to do, is I'm gonna make my jalapeno green sauce. It's probably the number one sauce in my kitchen. I have to have that on deck all the time. It's my favorite sauce. It's why I have five jalapeno plants this year. And I also have a lot of red jalapenos. There's a lot of jalapenos that I left for a little too long. Well, not too long, but just long enough for them to mature and turn red. And there is a sriracha shortage right now. Sriracha is made out of red jalapenos, so I'm gonna make my own sriracha. And also gonna be drying out some peppers to make homemade pepper powder and homemade pepper flakes. And if I have enough peppers and if I have enough time, I'm gonna make some habanero pepper jelly because that is my favorite. I love pepper jelly. I'm gonna take the last sip of my coffee. And then we are going to go harvest some peppers. There are lots and lots of jalapenos under here. There's some hot banana peppers over here that are starting to turn color. I think those would be good to add to the pepper powder. Over here, we've got some habaneros. Lots of them, it looks like. So hot out here, this poor plant is going limp, but it's literally like 96 degrees right now. Hopefully it is going to be cooling off for all of us very soon. There are also some Hungarian wax peppers in here. Those will be really good for the pepper powder as well. There are also some of these, what were supposed to be called beaver dam sweet peppers, but I tasted one the other day and it was, oh my God, it lit my mouth on fire. So I actually don't even know what kind of pepper this is. I also planted them in a really tricky spot where I can barely, barely even get to them. That was definitely my fault. I told you guys there were a lot of peppers out here. Whole basket, it's very heavy um, and I'm intensely sweating out here. It is like 96 degrees. I'm so hot, I need water. So let's go inside and deal with all these peppers. So first thing I'm gonna do is just lay them all out and kind of group them together. Got all of the red jalapenos. This is what we're gonna use to make the sriracha. And there are a lot of them. Okay, many more than I thought actually. <laughs> Some green ones that are just starting to turn red, but I am gonna use those for the green sauce. 
Unless they have a lot of red in them because I don't want it to ruin the color. I guess I can use those for the sriracha. I think I at least have enough green to make a couple bottles of the jalapeno sauce though. That's really all that matters right now because I am out of my jalapeno sauce and I've been fiending for it. So then we have the habaneros. Got lots of habaneros, definitely enough to make some habanero jelly, I think. Then we've got these mystery peppers that were supposed to be beaver dam, but I don't think that they are because beaver dam is a sweet pepper and these are very spicy. We've got the hot banana peppers, spicy Hungarian wax peppers. And the rest of these peppers are sweet peppers. We've got giant Marconi, there's a pimento pepper, these cherry red sweet peppers. That's it. Those are all the peppers that we're working with. I'm gonna pick out the peppers that I want to dehydrate. So I know that I wanna dehydrate these mystery peppers. I'm just gonna set them aside. Also these Hungarian wax peppers. Take a few habaneros because I don't need that much for the jam that I wanna make. I was gonna say the hot banana peppers, but honestly, I wanna snack on these. I love dipping these in ranch and just eating them as like a fresh snack. I'm also gonna take all of these little, um, these cherry sweet peppers and I'm gonna dehydrate these as well and mix them in with the hot pepper flakes because I feel like it just gives it a deeper flavor to where it's not all hot. It's got some sweet, It's it just gives it like a little bit more depth. The giant Marconis and the pimento pepper, I'm gonna put these with the habaneros because I need some sweet peppers for the jam that I like to make as well. I wanna get these peppers going in the dehydrator because it does take some time. So this is what we're doing first. First, I'm gonna give these peppers a really good rinse, dry them off really well. Looking them over, making sure they don't have any open wounds or bad spots on them. I've got the peppers all washed and dried and now I'm just going to slice them up a bit. So what I like to do is I like to cut the top off and then I like to slice them in half. Um, I'm leaving all of the seeds in because I'm making pepper flakes, but if you wanna make a more fine like pepper powder, you probably wanna remove those seeds. But if it's a super thick pepper like this Hungarian wax pepper, I'm gonna cut it down a little more. I actually might just go in here and do this number here like that. Also, if you want to dehydrate these peppers whole, you can totally do that. You just want to cut the stem off and then you can just dehydrate them whole like this if you want. I just, since I know that I'm gonna be making pepper flakes with these, um, I want them to dehydrate faster, so I'm just cutting them in half. I usually only keep my really long and skinny peppers whole anyways, like my cayennes. Um, and I already have a whole jar of cayenne peppers that I've already dehydrated this year. So I kind of decided that I just want to do pepper flakes because I'm actually out of pepper flakes. I really need some. Also, pro tip, um, I should be wearing gloves, <laughs> but... I forgot to put them on and it's like too late now. I can feel it burning my fingers. So I'm just gonna get through this and then wash my hands really, really well. Okay, I got those all chopped up. I'm just bringing my dehydrator over here. And it really is just as simple as placing the peppers on the rack, make, make sure that they don't touch each other, make sure they have enough air around them so that they can dehydrate properly. Lay out the Hungarian wax pepper. The little tiny sweet peppers. Mystery pepper, I really wanna know what this mystery pepper is. I have no idea. It's really good though. It's actually really sweet and tasty pepper. I just don't know what it is. I just wanna know the name of it. Okay, that is it. I'm gonna put this last tray on top even though it has nothing on it. Um, it's fine. And then the lid. I will link this dehydrator for you guys. I really like this dehydrator. Last year I went online and I bought like the cheapest dehydrator I could find, which was this one. And I didn't have high hopes for it, but it definitely has exceeded my expectations. I have been able to dehydrate so many things. I feel like it works very quickly, very efficiently never had any issues. I love this one. Peppers, I like to crank it all the way up. Like it's all the way on high 
And I'm gonna check these every couple of hours or so. And they're gonna be done when they are very hard and crunchy. So I got the peppers in the dehydrator drying and we actually just got a pretty severe thunderstorm warning. I was gonna go on and make the hot sauce while these were drying, but it looks like I might have to come back tomorrow because I could only imagine being in the middle of filming, making the hot sauce and then power goes out because our power usually goes out when it um, storms really bad. So I will see you guys tomorrow. We will make the hot sauce and we will also grind up the pepper powder. Hi there, it is the next day. Um, our peppers are all dried out, so it's time to make pepper flakes. Okay, so let's look here and see what we got. I had set these two aside because I just wanted to show you a different texture that you can dry them to. So I'm making pepper flakes and the rest of the peppers I dried out totally until they're nice and crunchy. But these two, I pulled these two out early so that I can show you that you can also dry them to this leather kind of consistency to where they're not so dried out that they're crunchy. They're still flexible, but they're still dry. And this is best if you want to save peppers that you want to reconstitute very quickly. You want to throw them in soups, stir fries, whatever you want to use them for. You can dry them out like this to where they're still flexible, just like I said, like a leather type of consistency. Although these will not last as long. In my experience, they last about a year this way, whereas if you dry them out completely, they can last a lot longer than that. The rest of these peppers, since we are turning them into pepper flakes, I dried them out completely. See, these are a lot different. They're not flexible at all. They break very easily and they're very crunchy, crispy, totally dried out, no water content left in them whatsoever. And that is gonna be best for your pepper flakes because the last thing you'd wanna do is make a bunch of pepper flakes and then have them go, go moldy because there's water left in them. To turn them into flakes, there's a couple things you can use. You can use a food processor, you can use a blender, or you can use like this thing that I have is a spice grinder. I love this thing, I've had it for years. It's a spice grinder, coffee grinder, and it also has a wet attachment that you can make sauces with. So there's two of these different attachments. This is the dry attachment, and then there's also a wet one for sauces. As easy as just filling this thing up with the dried peppers. I filled it up as much as I can. There's still some peppers left, but that is fine. We're going to grind this down first. And then there's this other lid that goes right on top. Place that on top. And then to start it, you just hold it down. It really only takes a few pulses to get there. This thing is crazy. I mean, that took like nothing at all to grind all of those peppers up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop the rest of these peppers in there. And I also have a bunch of other peppers that I previously dried that I'm gonna add in there as well because I've been meaning to grind these up. I'm grinding mine pretty fine. I know I said that I wanted pepper flakes, but honestly, this thing grinds up those seeds so well that you get a pretty fine powder, so. It is gonna be more of a pepper powder. I have this little jar that I always keep my powder in and I literally just ran out. Um, so we're just gonna refill it and we're just gonna scoop the powder in. This ended up making, this is empty, exactly one jar of pepper powder. That's crazy. <laughs> Top that goes on here and there we go. Homemade pepper powder. And I love putting this on chicken, steak, vegetables, anything. It's so, so, so good. Okay, so now it's time to make the hot sauces. Got out my little recipe book. I've had this green jalapeno sauce recipe for a very long time. I've had it for at least three years. And I had found a recipe online, and now I can't remember where I got it from, but I just added some of my own touches to it. Um, and this is a recipe, especially for the green sauce, that I follow religiously because I love it. It is a very um, vinegar forward recipe. So if you don't like vinegary hot sauces, you may not like this recipe or you may decide that you wanna cut back on some of the vinegar. It's a versatile recipe. You can totally play around with 
the amount of sugar, vinegar, and salt if you want. I just personally love the way that I'm about to make it. I think it's perfect. First, I'm just gonna weigh out my peppers and see how many ounces of peppers I have. My recipe goes in increments of four ounces. So this just lets me know um, how much I need to adjust it by. So we've got about 26 and a half ounces. I think that divided by four is like six and a half ish. Oh my gosh, I was so close. So we will just round that down to six and I'm gonna round it down because we are gonna be cutting the tops off of these so that'll decrease some weight. I'm just gonna be multiplying my four ounce recipe by six. These have already been washed so I'm just gonna start chopping them up. You don't have to chop them up very fine. We're just giving them a bit of a rough chop just like that. I like to leave all the seeds in but you are welcome to de-seed them if you want. It's totally your call. Again, I don't know why, I just refuse to wear gloves. I kind of have a sensory thing with gloves. I do not like wearing them. I don't like them on my hands. It's, I don't know, it's weird. I definitely feel like me increasing the recipe by six is going to get very confusing to some of you. So here is the recipe. I'm gonna put it on the screen if you just wanna make one bottle of this green sauce. Okay, I'm gonna heat my pan up on medium. And once it's heated, I'm gonna add a half a cup of olive oil and then in go our peppers. I'm gonna let them get hot and then I'm turning down the heat to low. We're gonna cover and cook for about eight or so minutes. Okay, so while that's cooking, we are gonna chop up some garlic. You can use how much ever garlic you wanna use. I usually do about two cloves per bottle, which means I would need 12. Um, I have eight here, so I need to go and grab some more garlic. And again, just kind of giving this a light chop because everything is gonna be blended up anyways. Garlic is going in. We're gonna cook this for another two to three minutes just to cook the garlic a little bit. Another thing you can do with this sauce if you want is you can char the jalapenos, you can char the garlic, you can add onion if you want. Um, this is not a canning recipe, this is a fridge recipe, so you're kind of free to play around more if you want. I just don't like charring them because I love the taste of the fresh jalapenos. Next we're adding the vinegar, the sugar, and the salt. So we're gonna add three cups of white vinegar. Add a half a cup of sugar. I know that sounds like a lot, but keep in mind this is supposed to make six bottles. So per bottle, it's about four teaspoons of sugar. And like I said, you can play around with that. You don't have to add sugar if you don't want to. I just think that it balances out the spiciness. And then we're doing three teaspoons of kosher salt. Crank the heat back up to medium and we're going to cover and let it simmer for another 10 minutes. After the 10 minutes, I'm just gonna take the cover off and we're gonna let it, um, we're gonna turn the heat off and we're gonna let it cool. Now that this has cooled, we are just gonna throw everything into the blender. I'm ladling it because it's heavy and I don't want to get it everywhere, accidentally drop it, that would be awful. Top going on. gonna taste it to make sure I don't need to add any more salt or vinegar or sugar just make sure that it oh dang it I dropped it on me on myself let's make sure it's okay it's perfect oh my god it's perfect I could drink this sauce pretty spicy though because those peppers were pretty mature they had a lot of um stretch marks and they were literally about to turn red probably within the next day or two so it's a little bit spicy, but I love spice. If you want it a little less spicy, what you can do is you can harvest your jalapenos earlier. You can harvest jalapenos pretty much at any stage. All they grow is they start off green and glossy, and then they'll get those stretch marks as they start to mature. They get a little bit spicier. They're still green though, and then they'll slowly start to turn red, and that is when they are 
they're spiciest, that's when they're the most mature. So the earlier you harvest jalapenos, the less spicy they're gonna be, the later, the more spicy. I try to harvest mine when they're a little more mature and they're more spicy, just because I personally love spice. I love spicy food, I love spicy hot sauce. I'm one of those people that literally puts hot sauce on everything. I was actually one of those kids in high school <laughs> that had like those little mini Texas Pete's. I always had one in my purse. I was that girl. Before I bottle up the green sauce, I'm gonna go ahead and get the red sauce started. I'm doing the exact same thing that I did for the green sauce. Um, there's just gonna be a few changes. So instead of white sugar, I'm gonna be using brown sugar and I'm gonna be adding some onion. I have 40 ounces of these peppers, so I'm gonna be multiplying my recipe by 10. I was actually thinking about fermenting these peppers, but honestly, I kinda wanna see how this tastes. I've never made my jalapeno sauce with red jalapenos before. So I wanna know how it tastes just unfermented. But if you're somebody that enjoys fermented hot sauce, you can totally ferment the peppers before making this sauce if you want. Add in the onion and garlic. You can already smell a difference between this and the, the green jalapenos. This smells sweeter. They smell a lot sweeter. And I'm really excited to taste this. I think it's gonna be really good. Brown sugar instead of white sugar this time. I don't know why, I just thought, I don't know. I just thought it would be nice to try brown sugar. is cooking I'm gonna go ahead and fill up these bottles with the green so I have this little bottle that I like to um, use because it's easier to pour it out of and then I'll store the rest in this jar and then you know when this is empty I'll just this is like my refill jar I'll just refill with this I have this tiny tiny little little funnel for this um, <laughs> for this hot sauce bottle I really need a new funnel. This is so messy, oh my God. Hold on, hold on, I need to regroup, regroup. I can't believe I lost some of this precious sauce, no. Fill up the rest. I don't even know if this jar is enough, hopefully. Oh my God, I made more than I thought. I'm excited though, because this stuff goes really fast. I use this on everything, eggs, tacos, like you name it, oh my God. There's so much of it. So I wish I could tell you guys that you could can this recipe, but I cannot. Um, I don't know if it's canning safe. I don't can it. I just, it's refrigerator safe for about three months. For something to be canning safe, it has to be tested. You have to know that the ratios of the vinegar and the salt and the sugar are right to be safe so that you don't get botulism. So I am advising you, do not try to can this. This is a refrigerator recipe. It will stay in your fridge for three months, but honestly, I've pushed those limits and I've kept it in there for six months before and it was fine. You just need to know to check it, know how to make sure that something is safe to eat or not, smell things before you eat them, yada yada. Done with the green sauce. I'm so excited to be restocked. I've actually been fiending for this for so long. Actually, not that long. It's been a couple weeks, but that to me, that's long. It's time to let this cool and then it's gonna go into the blender. Okay, let's taste it. That's my cat having the zoomies. Um, This is very, very good. It's very, very spicy. It's a lot spicier than the green sauce. Um, I love it though. The flavor is so good. I maybe even like it more than the green sauce. I think I do. It is pretty spicy though. And it's pretty spicy. <laughs> I don't know why I was saying that I was making sriracha. This is not sriracha. <laughs> this is just red jalapeno sauce. Um, the color is different than sriracha. The taste is very different. Again, it's a very vinegar forward recipe. I love vinegar. I love vinegar hot sauce more than I like sriracha. It's so good, it's very good. This is also gonna have to stay on rotation. I'll tell you one thing, I was not expecting this like carrot orange color. I was definitely expecting it to be more red, but I like this color, it's such a pretty orange. 
This is a lot of hot sauce. I actually may need to give some of this away to friends and family. Look at this bounty that we just made. It is so much hot sauce. I'm definitely going to be giving some of that away to friends, family, neighbors. I keep tasting this red sauce, or I guess orange sauce, because you know what it is? It's buffalo sauce. It tastes just like buffalo sauce. This is gonna be so, so delicious with some wings. I know what I'm making this weekend. I'm making wings. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful to the garden today for giving me pepper powder and a lot, a lot of hot sauce. I think I'm gonna save the habanero jelly for another video just to not make this video too long. Um, but I did wanna say that you can use habaneros in this recipe if you want a really spicy sauce. I made it with habaneros once and it was amazing. It is just super spicy. But if you love super spicy, you will love making this with habaneros. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, <gasps> Oops, I just almost knocked over. I almost just lost a hot sauce, sorry. If you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments. I will answer them as best as I can. I hope you all have a beautiful weekend and I will see you next week.